Tell us a little bit about, well, first of all, tell us what you've been doing in your local community. Well, a few years ago, I would have been giving out flu vaccines um, in the pharmacy. I'm not a pharmacist anymore, obviously. I'm minister in training. I've, I've All my insurances and all my stuff has lapsed. But I was asked if I would volunteer with our local GP surgery. Um, and so I'm currently wearing 15 layers of thermal clothing because I'm going to stand in the car park again. Um, and this I'm volunteering just with coordinating a vaccination clinic. So it's not a glamorous job. We stand in the rain and the sleet and the snow and the, whatever the weather brings. And we do car park marshalling. We check people in. We ask people um, whether they have coronavirus symptoms. Have they been in contact with anybody so that we know they're safe to go into the building? We see people through. We help people, um, you know, help people into wheelchairs if they need to. We get our vulnerable people into the building and out of the building at the end and safely on their way home. Um, and I'm just part of a team of 10 or 12 people from all walks of life who are enabling the surgery to have a really smoothly running vaccination clinic. And so far it's it's going well? We've, we've seen a lot of people vaccinated. Um, last week uh, they had a three-day clinic and used a, a whole batch of, of Pfizer uh, vaccine pretty much. Uh, this week... Um, we're doing the same thing, but I think it's going to be the Oxford vaccine this week. So slightly smaller numbers, but yeah, three, uh, two afternoons and a full day on Saturday, probably, mm. as we get lots of people protected from the virus. Brilliant. That's good. Now, we've obviously we've uh, we've got this initiative at the moment. We're encouraging everybody to pray for our NHS and we're, we're encouraging people not just to do that in, in a kind of broadway but think about local services local people and of course i think one of the things we forget maybe is that our nhs at the moment is really being asked to do two massive jobs one is to roll out the biggest vaccination program i think in history people are saying but also of course look after a a, a really quite alarming amount of very sick people at the moment and we've heard I mean we've heard a lot from people in the front line and we know how important that job is that people are doing caring for Covid victims but you know you once upon a time you were a pharmacist pharmacist what what you know what is involved in, in getting a, a vaccine program of this size out uh, I mean it's not just a matter of giving someone a jab is it there must be a huge amount of work and thought that has to go into it I know our local surgery have had to put in place sort of um, selection criteria so they can ring all the right people and make sure nobody's missed out. So they have to work out who they're calling. They've got receptionists calling people all the time because they were using the, the Pfizer vaccine, which has a limited time span. Um, they were very carefully calculating exactly how many people they could see. And then at the end of the, the three days, they were phoning people. They were going into every room saying, how many doses do you have left? We'll ring that many extra people. They didn't waste a single dose. So you have people on phones, reception staff, admin staff. You have people um, that the cleaners are having to work extra hard at the moment doing, you know, deep cleans of um, buildings that would not normally need that level of cleaning. You've got everybody involved at every level um you you're using waiting areas for people to sit and check that they're okay um there's just a phenomenal amount of coordinating and putting things together they actually did a, a bit of a dry run um with some of the volunteers the day before they started so that they could check that they've got the timing right how long will it take to vaccinate people so that we make sure we've left enough time for people, particularly for agile people who take a while to get in and out of the chair. Um, you know, they've, they've got lots of coordinating to, to do to make it all work. Um, and they, they, they practiced, they did their reading and they've got this incredibly well run system um, mm. based on all the information that's coming out that they're having to learn as they go along. And, and as a professional pharmacist, I mean, you know, people are saying many of us wouldn't really quite appreciate it. But to have turned round a vaccine in, in less than 12 months is is also a, a pretty incredible achievement. Normally to create a vaccine from scratch would be a 10 year process by the time you've done the clinical trials and everything else. Now, they'd actually um, some of the scientists in some of the research establishments have been working on techniques that could be adapted to anything. 
And that's what they've used so that they could cut out a lot of the development processes. They'd got a system that would work whenever they find a new serious disease. And actually this disease was identified. And I think the genome was all, was all laid out in January last year before we had any idea of the impact this would have worldwide. But it meant people were starting to work very, very early on. Um, my daughter was involved in the, she's a hospital doctor um, in Cambridge, she was involved in the trial for the Oxford vaccine. She had her first vaccination back in June. It turned out actually they vaccinated her against meningitis, she just found out last week. So she's only just had her coronavirus vaccine. Um, but they were working doing overlapping different elements of, of trials and all sorts of things because they've been rehearsing for this sort of thing, because that's what scientists do. They try to be prepared. It's been mm -hmm. phenomenal what's been achieved. Yeah. And I'm interested, I mean, because you, you're obviously now, you know, you're minister of a church, you're still very much known in the community as the pharmacist. And it, it just strikes me that when we talk about this, that that, that basic, caring for people there's huge overlaps between your role as a minister and, and your role as a pharmacist as used to be yes um actually when i was going for training i, I turned to one of the people i'd worked with for 15 years and i said i'm not sure i'm going to be any good at pastoral care and looking after people and she laughed at me and said what do you think you've just been doing for the last 15 years beside me um lots of roles that we take on involve care and actually standing there in the car park making sure that the right people get parking spaces the people who can't walk long distances get the parking spaces near the surgery doors and um, putting people into wheelchairs and just keep keeping people's spirits up while they're standing in the cold waiting to go in it's all part of the same kingdom principles of looking after people and showing god's love wherever we are and it's, it's wonderful to know that actually some of our Baptist churches now are being made over into vaccination centres. And there's a little article on the Baptist Union website uh, telling people about that. And actually we're in some conversations here in the Northwest about whether there may be some of our own churches that are used for that. I mean, Rachel, be, we're going to ask you to pray in a moment. But before you do, if anyone's watching today and they're maybe feeling a bit, little bit reluctant about having a vaccine, what would you say to them? This has been really well tested because it's science that's existed for a lot of years. Um, they offered my parents-in-law who are in their late eighties, their vaccination. And we were very, very happy to drive them 25 miles and take them to a vaccination clinic for them, them to have their first dose of vaccine. My mom's been vaccinated. I've actually been vaccinated because I'm volunteering. So I have a lot of patient contact at the moment. So they vaccinated the volunteers. We were part of the trial run. Um, and I would, I would recommend it to anybody. So many members of my family who work within the NHS have been vaccinated. We have, you know, sometimes you get a bit of a sore arm. It's doing what it should be doing. Your, your immune system's recognizing it, but the protection that we can afford ourselves and the people around us, the people we come into contact with, is just going to be the thing that changes life again for us. It's amazing. Thanks, Rachel. Well, thank you for what you're doing. And, uh, you know, as you wrestle with all the requirements of, of ministry and training and getting your degree finished and looking after the church and volunteering, we just pray that you'll find God's blessing in, in all of that. Well, you're going to lead us in prayer now as we continue to think about those in the front line and of course, those people who are very much in need of their care and their services. So please lead us. Yeah. So let's pray together. Loving God, God who healed through Jesus, God who changes lives and restores and refreshes and renews. We want to bring before you today those people who are working so hard just now. We want to offer before you those doctors and nurses, all those working on wards in the hospital, those working on COVID wards and those working in other places, those people who can feel very vulnerable just at the moment. Father God, we pray for your blessing and your peace your encouragement and your refreshment for them. We pray for the managers who have to make such difficult decisions so quickly 
as situations change so fast. Those people who are having to decide about changing wards from COVID to non-COVID, back to COVID wards, all those people who make the difficult choices. Those people who have to make sure that the oxygen systems work, all the technological and technical bits in the background that we don't normally have to think about. Father, we pray for your blessing on them. We pray for those pharmacists and pharmacy staff, the healthcare workers on the wards. We pray for those cleaning and catering and doing admin. So many roles that have become increasingly important as things have picked up pace and change has become such a central part of everybody's working life. Father God, we pray for wisdom. We pray for those porters who are just pushing people around hospitals, who seem to be often in the background, but whose presence makes so much difference and whose role has become so essential. And we pray for your safety and protection for them. We pray for maintenance staff in hospitals. We pray for receptionists. And we pray for vaccinators in the community and out in, in all sorts of different settings, places we never expected to see clinics before. And we thank you, Father God, for your presence as you do healing work through so many people. So many people who may not even be aware that you are a God who heals. But Father, we thank you that you are, you are through our prayers at work in our communities, in our hospitals, in our nation. We thank you for those scientists and researchers who've done all the work that meant that a vaccine could be created and rolled out so quickly. We thank you for those who've been willing to learn, work hard, work through the night so often to get things done, to get processes in place. And we are so grateful, Father God, for the sacrifices people have made time and effort and for the study and the work that's gone into everything and we pray too for those people who feel that their their communities are being left behind in this process those nations whose vaccination programs will take a long time to reach them because of poverty and we pray that as this nation is able to rejoice in seeing people beginning to be protected we pray that you'll give us open eyes to see what we can do to stretch this out and reach this out into the whole world. And very particularly, Father God, we want to pray for those patients who are suffering right now. And for the chaplains working in hospital and trying to support and comfort patients and staff and everybody who is finding these days so hard. Father God, even just in staying home, it can feel like such a big sacrifice. But many people are having to sacrifice so much more. And we pray for every person we've named. We, we may be able to think of specific people who fit so many of these categories. People who do clean, push hospital trolleys, all sorts of roles. People we may know by name. And we pray for our own GPs too, as they're having to adapt all their practices still. We pray for all these people and we pray for your peace and your comfort, your reassurance and your protection. Help us, Father God, each one of us. Help us, God who loves, to be doing everything that we can do, to be praying for those people we can pray for and giving encouragement. Help us to be positive not negative at this point, and help us to see wonderful results as we're able to start to release the, the lockdown situation as more of us are protected. We thank you for your presence in our lives and the fact we can talk to you about all these things. We thank you that when we can't be in the COVID wards, you are there. When we can't be with the people we love, you are there. So we pray for your presence to be felt. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen.